gives you a little bit of an idea. And, you know, you might say, oh, come on, Bill, that's Hollywood. And that's real. I mean, I'm telling you, hell is a lot worse than that. And um, try to, you can imagine the fear that you would have living in a place like that and having no chance of escape, no strength, nothing you can do. There's no cavalry coming over the hill to rescue you. There's no angel to protect you. And, uh, and there's a lot of people out here that really want to know what the scripture says, so I just want to quote them. Uh, Matthew 25, 41, <clears throat> it talks about hell was made for the devil and his angels, not for man. Isaiah 14, 15, Ezekiel 28, 17, 2 Peter 2, 4, Jude 6, <clears throat> Revelation 12, 4 through 8 talks about demons cast down to the earth. So we know that uh, demons or fallen angels are in hell in shield right now and on the earth and uh, their scriptures talk about uh, Matthew 2541 or 2451 says and he will cut him to pieces where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth Matthew 1834 says deliver him to the tormentors and the tormentors according to Matthew Henry he's one of the most respected commentaries he said um, regarding that scripture he said devils the executioners of God's wrath will be their tormentors forever and in Luke 12, 47, talks about beaten with many stripes or beaten with few. And uh, Luke 12, 47, Wesley, John Wesley says, For the executioners of God's wrath are at hand. Once he has delivered you over to them, you are undone forever. And then Psalms 50, verse 22 says, You that forget God, I will tear you in pieces. Again, Matthew Henry, uh, on that scripture, he says... Um, those who will not consider the warnings of God's word will certainly be torn to pieces by the executioners. So there's people, credible people and scholars and commentaries that believe these scriptures, that's what that applies to. But um, the good thing is that none of us have to go there. You know, that's the good news. So God didn't make it for man. It says he made it for the devil and his angels, Matthew 25, 41. So that is the good news. Amen? Amen. But um, I was next to that pit, pit of fire and I was I, something started to lift me up and I started being raised up and I was in a tunnel it was like a cavern and all around the edges of the cavern were uh, other demonic creatures some were small you know two and three feet tall some were four or five feet tall some six or eight feet and some 13 feet though, huge ones uh, there were snakes and spiders uh, everything that you would hate uh, worms and maggots uh, every grotesque thing is there and they all have a knowledge of a hatred for you. For some reason, they hate you. And um, they want to torment you. But the ones that were around this wall were all chained to the wall. I can't explain that, but they were all chained to the walls. I was glad that they were. They couldn't get to me. So, but, you know, like I said, they're all deformed, twisted. No symmetry at all to their bodies. And uh, grotesque, evil. There's an evil about every one of them and maggots crawling all over the place, you know, and the, Jesus talked a lot about where their worm dies not and the fire is not quenched. He says their worm, like your own particular worms. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, if, you, if a, an animal would be dead off the side of the road and you see it has maggots in it, this is gross, I know, but uh, the maggots will die when the body is consumed. You see, and that's what Jesus was saying is where their worm dies not because the body's never consumed. It goes on forever, and the worms eat the people forever. And the fire burns it forever, but it's never consumed. Like the burning bush. Right? There's a burning bush that, with um, uh, Abraham and uh, Moses, and he went up to see the burning bush, and it wasn't consumed. So you're, you're never consumed in hell, but they keep feeding on you. And it's, it's terrible. Uh, anyway, all these creatures, and I was thinking, who could fight off just one of these? I mean, nobody you know, could fight them off. I mean, look at the size of that thing. And uh, such an evilness and hatred for man. They hated me with a, uh, it's just an incredible hatred and blaspheming God. You know, and there's a scripture in Psalms 106, 41 says, And he gave them into the hands of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. Now it's talking about God gave Israel into the hands of the heathen. And see, that curse that went on them, it's the same kind of curses that follow in hell. You're turned over to these demons, and they that hate you will rule over you. And you can't do anything about it. You know, and God's made us, man, the highest form of creation, right, man? And we work hard and we, you know, get educated and all that. And now in hell, you're subjected to these creatures that have become the lowest form of creation. And they rule over you. I mean, how disgusting is that? I mean, this thing that has uh, like a zero IQ and hates you, uh, just knows torment. 
and can torment you for eternity. You know, that, is that thought bad enough? I mean, look, how, how bad could it be? I mean, you can't breathe, you can't eat, you can't sleep, you, you burn, you, you're tormented, and all this you have to endure for eternity. Anyway, so as I began ascending up this tunnel, um, it was going into pitch black now because I was leaving the flames and it lit up just a little bit to see those pits of fire. And like I said, the light didn't travel very far, but enough for me to see a little. And as we went up into this dark tunnel, it got really pitch black. And I was just so afraid and knowing that I was there forever. And then all of a sudden, I mean, just all of a sudden, no warning, this bright light showed up. And it was Jesus. And uh, he showed up and just I just fell at his feet. I didn't see his face. I just saw a bright light and an outline of a man in this bright light. A super bright, pure white light. And I just fell down at his feet. And all I wanted to do was worship him. I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to move. I didn't want anything. I just wanted to be thankful. I, one second ago, I was lost forever. And he placed it back in my mind that I was a Christian. And that I didn't have to go there. You see, so, I mean, to go from one second to that, to one second later being with him, it just was... It was amazing, and I can't even describe it, to be in His presence, uh, so glorious and so powerful to be with Jesus. I just laid at His feet. I don't know how long. It didn't seem like it was very long. And uh, He touched me. You know, and I said, Jesus, and He said, I am. And I already knew it was. You didn't have to wonder who it was at all. You know, some people say, oh, how do you know it wasn't a devil? Uh, I've seen enough devils. You know, I know what they were like. His presence is so overwhelming, there's no mistaking that it's Jesus. None. He's so powerful and so peaceful and so loving. And all those things I'm going to try to describe to you. But I just, like I said, I felt His feet as a dead man. I felt like I died. And just, I, don't, I can't explain it, but remember in Revelation 1.16 where John said, His countenance was bright as the sun and I felt His feet as a dead man. That's just what happened. I felt like that. And He touched me and then I revived. And I... Uh, I, I, thoughts started forming in my head. I didn't really want to ask him a question. You know, I just want to be thankful and grateful. But thoughts started coming to my mind. And he would answer my thoughts. I didn't really want to ask him, but he would answer my thoughts. And I thought to myself, why did he send me to this terrible place? And he said, because many people do not believe that hell exists. Some of my own people do not believe that hell is real. That statement shocked me. But since then, I've met a lot of Christians that don't believe in hell. Or they believe in annihilationism, that, you know, if we hit hell and you're annihilated, there's no hell. Uh, it's only for the devil. Or uh, they believe that eventually everybody will get out. Universalism. I mean, there's a lot of Christians that say they are, they are born again, they love the Lord, and they really don't believe in hell. And it's amazing, but um, there was an article, too, in um, uh, the LA Times, June 19th of 02, which was labeled, Hold the Fire and Brimstone and where they interviewed all these pastors and they found out nobody was teaching on hell except for Ray Comfort and uh, they all said well hell's a little archaic we don't really believe that and we just know it's separation from God that's about all we know and that's what they, all these people said in the, this is in the paper you can check it out for yourself so a lot of the churches aren't teaching hell and a lot of people don't believe it so that's when he said my, even some of my own people do not believe that hell exists go and tell them it's real it exists and it's not my desire that anybody go there it's not my will for anyone to go there. Go and tell them. So I just thought to myself, yes, sir. You know, yeah, I'll go. Uh, I didn't even question it for a second, um, being in his presence like that, you know. But uh, then I thought to myself, Lord, you know, how come those demons hated me so much? And he said, because you're made in my image, and they hate me. And John 15, 18 says, they hated me before they hated you, Jesus said. So uh, they have a hatred for mankind. They hate us. And they hate God, but they can't do anything against Him, but they can hurt His cre creation. And that's what they want to do. These demons want to hurt us and torment us. And I thought, you know, Lord, I thought to myself, Lord, why did you pick me? And that's really, I shouldn't have even thought that thought because it's really arrogant of a thought. I mean, when a general would come up to you if you were in the military and said, soldier, go guard that barrack, and it's a five-star general, you wouldn't say, well, why did you pick me? You know. You wouldn't say that. That'd be, you'd just go, right? You would obey his order. Well, but I thought it. I just thought it. And he, um, he didn't really give me an answer. Uh, actually, he didn't give me any answer uh, why he picked me. So I, I can't, I really don't 
can't imagine why he picked me. I'm the least likely, in my opinion, to go. Uh, you know, I'm a realtor. I'm not a Billy Graham or Mother Teresa. I'm not anybody famous. I'm not anybody important, to, in, so to speak. And so, you know, like I said before, I, I don't even like the summertime. So, you know, the heat bothers me. <laughs> I, I, I love order and cleanliness and I'm a fanatic about all those things and hell is the antithesis. It's filthy, disgusting, stench, horrible. I mean, all of us would hate those things, but I'm like really extreme on it, okay? So, you know, for me to go there, it's like, I, it's the last, I'm the last one I would think. But the Lord said, uh, tell him I am coming very, very soon. And he repeated himself. He said, tell him I'm coming very, very soon. And he said, um, you know, go and tell them again that I don't want anybody to go to this place. And I said, Lord, why didn't I know you? Why didn't I know you? And he said, because if you would have known me, you would have had hope. And I wanted you to experience what they feel there, hopelessly lost for eternity, to never get out. You see, and that's the most important thing to experience because, you know, like I said before, the torments are terrible, but we, on life here, you can't imagine what it is to be in a hopeless situation. I mean, even the people in the concentration camps had hope that they'd die and get out of it. But you can't die. You can't get out. You'll never get out. So see, can you try to imagine that for a second, that kind of horror that to be in for eternity? It, it's beyond your mind to be able to conceive this. And that's why it's frustrating for me to try to explain to you how terrible it is there. But that's, that's why he withheld from my mind that I was a Christian. And, and again, before when I related to you that this was a... Um, this was an out-of-body experience. It comes under the classification of vision. I shared with you Ezekiel and John and all those people. That's no way to associate myself with any of these great men. Okay, I'm, I'm not in any way in their league at all. It's just to show you scripture that these things can happen. Okay, it's just a vision. But um, anyway, the Lord said, the Lord, we kept ascending up above the earth's surface and we went way above the earth's surface. We came, we're still in a tunnel, even above the earth, there was still like a whirlwind around us. I couldn't see it, but I knew it was there. And we went way above till we came out of this tunnel. So at that distance, now we were way out in space. So the earth was like just a ball, you know. So I was way out in space. And I know that, again, sounds far-fetched, but... You know, the whole thing's crazy, so... But it's not. It's the truth. So, uh, and as we were out in space... You know, it was just phenomenal to see the world hung on nothing. He, it says in uh, Job 26, 7, that he hangeth earth, the earth upon nothing. It's hung on nothing. There's nothing holding it up. And you see it there. It's amazing. If all of you could see it, I'm telling you, uh, astronauts, most of them get saved that go out in space when they see all this. Because you just can't believe that this thing's hung there and turning so perfectly. And the Lord allowed me for a brief moment to experience His power. Uh, to feel part of his power. I, I could feel the control he has over everything. I mean, just a piece he let me feel because I saw the vastness of space and all the stars and all the planets. And, uh, and he's in control of every one of them and there's billions of them. And he has, everyone has a name for them. And he knows everything that's going on everywhere. It was just mind-boggling to feel the power he has controlling all that and watch the earth turning in a thousand miles an hour so perfectly and the, the water not spilling onto the land. I look at the ocean think, what, what's keeping it from moving? You know, it could spill onto the land just a little bit. It would wipe out a lot. But God holds the land there, holds the water in its place. And I, uh, I, I knew that he, had, he understands every thought man has. Every bird doesn't fly to, you know, fall to the ground. He knows every hair on your head. You know, all that came into my mind, rushed in my thoughts. You know, just being with him to grasp that power that he has. It's, it's unbelievable. His, he's in control of everything. There is nothing he's out of control in, okay? So, you know, we sometimes think that, you know, God maybe doesn't hear our prayer or why is he missing it? He doesn't miss anything. He is totally in control of everything. So that's what I really felt. And, and then he allowed me to feel... Uh, part of his love. And as I was looking, first I had, first I looked and I, when I saw those demons, how powerful they were. And then I realized, you know, being with Jesus, when we were going up that tunnel, that they looked so, when I look back at those demons, they looked like ants on the wall. When I was in his presence, they looked like an ant on the wall. And I can't explain that. I don't know if they really became that small or they just appeared that way being with Jesus. But they looked like nothing. And I thought, Lord, look at those, those things that were so big that I was so afraid of. They're nothing. 
And he said, all you have to do is cast them out in my name. And it was like, yeah, glory to God. Yeah. I, I felt so, you know, on fire. I thought, those things were tormenting me. I, th I thought, Lord, get them. Just get them, Lord. You know, I wanted to tear them apart. But, you know, the power, the authority he's given us over the devil. See, we don't have to be afraid of them at all when you know Jesus. But without Jesus, you're no match for them, you see. So anyway, when we were um, back, he let me look back into that tunnel and I could see people falling one after another after another back down that tunnel I just came out of. And I just looked and I thought, oh, Lord, all these people going down where I just came out of. And he allowed me to feel a piece of his heart again, his love that he has for us. And it hurt him to see those people falling into hell. It actually hurt him. And I couldn't stand to feel what he felt. He allowed me to feel it. I had to ask him to stop. I said, stop, stop, stop it, Jesus. I couldn't feel the pain that he felt. And uh, for each person that falls into hell, he weeps over. It's not his desire for anybody to go to hell. Like I said, he didn't make it for man. He made it for the devil and his angels. But man is given a choice. And we have to decide now, in this life, it's too late one second after you die. And so he allowed me to feel that, that love he has. And like I said, I had to ask him to stop. But it was really glorious to feel it. I mean, how much, how much he really loves us. And when I was at his feet, you know, I just thought about for a second, boy, what if he wouldn't have gone to the cross? You know, then I, we'd all be there. But because he went to the cross, we, can, we don't have to go there. And I was just so thankful and grateful of what he did for us. And uh, amen, aren't you? Amen, thankful. But I, again, we, as we were up looking at the earth, I wanted to stay there for a while just to look at it. It was so glorious. And I believe God allowed me to see it because as a kid, I always desired to see the earth from space. I wanted to be an astronaut when I was younger. And I believe the Lord remembered that thought. He remembered that thought that I had, and it was a desire in my heart. Even though it was a small thing, he took the scenic route home. Amen? <laughs> so, so I could see the earth from space, and he remembered that. And I think that's amazing, because he said he'll give us a desire.